Okay, in this video, we will go over uh, unit two, which is about biodiversity. The first thing about biodiversity is that uh, it covers uh, three separate diversities. Uh, the first one, it's going to be uh, genetic diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is this, okay, you don't want to get killed by diseases, right? So uh, you're going to eat, uh, so species uh, should, or every single individual, of the species should have a different kind of uh, genetic makeup in order to uh, in order to um, uh, protect themselves uh, by uh, this uh, genetic differences. Uh, like uh, we don't want like COVID kills. Uh, you don't want COVID to kill every single one. And the reason why not every single one dies is because we have some kind of genetic differences. And then, uh, and with and with uh, with that, uh, we can continue to project the bigger scale, which will be the species diversity. Uh, species diversity would be very important because uh, we need different species to uh, to maintain all the functions and all this ecological surfaces uh, throughout this planet. Okay, so some would fix the nitrogen, some would convert uh, nutrients to other forms, some would do the decomposition. Blah blah blah. All right, and of course, uh, in order to have more species, we have to have different kind of habitats: cold, hot, the humid, dry, uh, salty, the fresh water. Okay, the habitat, the habitat diversity is going to be very important uh, in terms of um, uh, keeping all the species together. Okay, uh, now one thing that is currently hurting. Uh, our species diversity, as you can see at the top in red, it's habitat destruction, uh, also uh, including habitat fragmentation. Okay, uh, the two ways to assess uh, biodiversity, uh, we can look at how much, or how many species there are, and uh, we can also look at how spread out it is. Okay, so species richness is about the number of species, and species evenness is about the uh, uh, even population uh, distribution, okay, between among the species. So what you want is to have maybe ten species uh, across the board, and then you have a pretty good uh, population amount uh, for e every single one of them. Not like ten species, but one is much more than the others. Uh, that would not be a really good. And with the with the robust diversity, okay, then you have a resilient. Uh, ecosystem. Okay, so resilience, it's uh, directly related to uh, biodiversity here. Uh, there are four types of ecosystem surfaces, as you can see here, uh, provisioning, regulating, cultural, and supporting. Now, this one, it's most likely to be, uh, I can clearly imagine this uh, on the FRQ section, where you have to propose, you have to suggest uh, some of these. So the idea, okay, provisioning is about providing stuff, okay? So think about providing food, providing water, fresh water for drinking, raw materials for building, uh, regulating, regulating a lot of things like water quality, CO2, okay, air quality. Trees are really good at regulating air quality, okay? Uh, cultural will be about the humans, okay? So think about all the stuff that human do all the humans do and recreation tourism aesthetic uh purposes and supporting uh supporting genetic diversity supporting habitats for species uh so so i would say uh, uh keep make sure that you are looking at the top okay the the, the the categories here and after you look at the categories then you can derive and elaborate on the other ones Island about geography, it's a huge one. You are guaranteed to see this on the test. Uh, the, the idea is very simple. We have a large continent on the left, so uh, and then we have two islands. Uh, we have two islands uh, differed by differences, uh, differed by distances, and also the sizes. You have the small island that's close and a large island that it's far. So I purposely designed this slide like this because uh, the question is, well, which one's going to have more species at the end? Uh, and the answer is, is the uh, the large island will be uh, the one that has a much more diversity uh, in the end. Uh, now, of course, uh, it's going to be challenging to move to the large island because it's so far away. But the small island is not necessarily uh, 
great for species because the island is so small, the resources would be so limited among all the species that could be um, that could be there. So the competition is very fierce. Large islands, uh, large island uh, like this one, even though it's far away, well, it's, we just let time to play its thing to do this thing to uh, let chance to place the uh, species onto the island through wind through water through birds okay so uh, through trees maybe some uh, some tree logs that can be floated uh, in the ocean to go all the way to the large island so so given enough given enough time uh, the uh, the large island will have a uh, greater amount of species now the problem is this: the right bottom corner, the colonists, uh, the colonists' uh, struggles. Uh, there are three uh, problems with a uh, uh, small population here: with the founders' effect, genetic drift, and inbreeding. These are all struggles for small population size. Uh, small population size, because uh, with only a few individuals at a new place. Um, there, well, I mean, they could have a lot of babies, but they better have a lot of babies because that's the only case to guarantee a large degree of uh, genetic differences. And if they do not have a large amount of babies, then it is very likely that they will be inbreeding because uh, uh, the siblings will be breeding with each other. And uh, any kind of small population, when they have a small population size and there's reproduction going on, uh, then it is very easy to have these genetic diseases because the uh, recessive gene would be expressed easier that way. And also a genetic drift uh, because of the small population size. So uh, if they do not have a lot of babies, then it's hard to guarantee that some of the good genetic information could get, could get passed along to the next uh, generation. All right, uh, this one is very easy, uh, ecological tolerance. So every single species, every single individual has different kinds of uh, different levels of uh, range of tolerance. Uh, I like cold weather, but I don't like hot weather. Uh, some will be different. So every single species, every single individual would have differences in terms of the tolerance on salinity, especially for aquatic species. Temperature, humidity, especially for amphibians. pH would be for uh, aquatic species. So uh, so you can see the optimal range would result in the uh, larger the largest number of uh, organisms or individuals, but as we move away from the optimum, then the population would drop. Okay. Uh, natural disruptions to ecosystems. We have different kinds of uh, disruptions in the past, which resulted in five mass extinction events. Okay, uh, it's uh, most likely uh, the climate change due to volcanic eruption or uh, meteorites uh, uh, striking Earth um, and then causing all kinds of chaotic volcanic eruption. So, uh, so we did have natural uh, disruptions, and uh, later on, it relates to our. Uh, Successions, primary and secondary successions. Uh, oops. Uh, adaptation is very important. Uh, adaptation uh, means that uh, you have this. Um, um, uh, after you have these uh, mutations, uh, then you have to have. Um, after you have these mutations, uh, then you will uh, rely on the. Um, uh, rely on the um, the. Uh, adapt mutations uh, there and adaptations will be the reason why uh, they can continue to survive. Okay, so adaptation is important to make sure that the good genes will stay along and uh, and that will increase the chance of reproduction. That will increase the chance of uh, of having uh, more offsprings with the good genes. So um, so adaptation will be part of our discussion in. Uh, uh, natural selection and also uh, definitely resource partitioning that we talked about in unit one, uh, like the beaks for birds. Okay, the reason why uh, they are able to um, uh, to uh, partition the resources is because uh, some mutations happened to make their beaks differently, and therefore uh, they can get the food sources a little bit differently increasing the chance of survival and therefore we have all kinds of uh, different species eventually okay last but not least we have uh, as, as i as i mentioned earlier uh, we have the primary and secondary successions uh, they're different uh, they're very different actually uh, they're different by 
the uh, the amount of uh, time it takes. So primary, since it starts with bare rocks, it takes about hundreds of years. While secondary, it's more likely from natural or human-made disasters, disruptions, disruptions. Uh, so uh, there will be existing soil already. That's why I put it in brown. Um, that it takes uh, maybe decades to maybe a hundred years to reach a uh, climax, the ecological climax. Uh, it's very important to acknowledge the uh, common pioneer species uh, like lichens, fungi, mosses, and bacteria. They are the ones who uh, arrive especially important for primary succession so that they can uh, decay the rocks and you know, kickstart the uh, soil formation cycle. Okay. Uh, we also talk about keystone species. They are very important because uh, without them, the entire food chain or food web could collapse. The ecosystem could collapse as a result of their absences. Uh, like gray wolves would be very significant for Yellowstone uh, National Park, uh, sea otter on the west coast of the United States in California, and sharks in the ocean. Okay, sharks are very important in terms of keeping the uh, health of the ocean uh, and a good. Uh, check okay uh, indicator species they are the ones who provide information about what is uh, going on with the ecosystem uh, like with uh, so, uh, with a sharp drop of birds or fish we can say well maybe there's some kind of pollution going on maybe the pollution killed them uh, like honeybees honeybees would be a good keystone species and indicator species both because uh, they're so important in terms of providing food for us uh, through a uh, pollination and, uh, and the absences is telling us something uh, because of the, uh, the disappearance, the colony collapses, order of honeybees. Um, so it's very important to acknowledge their importance of uh, telling us the status of the ecosystem. All right, just to make sure that uh, uh, you take a look at the uh, one-page review uh, on these uh, uh, major topics to make sure that you are on top of all these key details.